Hey y'all, it's Madeline Lorelei. I look horrible today, so I ain't gonna be in this video, but today we are making some squirrel and dumplings. So I got two squirrels that we got lately. You see, that's just a little bit of ice from where they were in the freezer. I store mine in water. I think they freeze well that way. And to this, we are going to add just some salt. I like to season the meat, even though we're gonna pick it and like have separate raw. Some black pepper. Just a dot of cider vinegar. I mean, just a... That's all it takes. And bouillon cube. And we're gonna let this ball. Okay, y'all, I'm sorry for kind of weird camera angles, but we're just kind of, we're just kind of struggling here because uh, my tripod's broke right now. Whoop. We start this boiling heavily, but we're getting our squirrels out. As you can see, they are just cooked to death. Here, I got a little bit of broth on that unit. It'll be okay. I'll wipe it up here in a second. Squirrels like to do this whenever you cook them. Do like a chicken, they like to get on spread eating. But we have our squirrels cooked, and they've been cooking all day. I mean, they're they're good. They're done. We're going to put these in the refrigerator, let them calm, uh, cool down, and we're going to pick them off the bones. And then we're going to get to work on our dumplings. I'm still struggling getting creative with these camera angles. but So what we're going to do, we're going to mix up our dumplings. This is just... White lily, self-rising flour, same thing I use for biscuits and everything. We're gonna use about, about a cup and a half. We're not super exact. We're gonna leave it there in case we need some more. But so, white lily flour, a little bit of salt. Not a ton because we have salted the broth. Put that back up here. And now we're gonna get a ladle. And we're going to get some of our broth, which we've turned way down. And we're going to ladle ourselves a couple of ladles full in here. Start mixing this up. I like to use my broth and my dumplings. I feel like it gives it a little better flavor. You know, it, it imparts the flavor that's present in the broth into the dumplings and when you do it that way i feel you don't have to boil them as long to get that flavor in there because dumplings can be bland if you don't do it right that's why you see folks will have like bland dumplings with a pile of uh, salt in the broth so we're starting to get a shaggy dough we'll keep mixing this up you want to work it pretty good. I'm kind of kneading it in this process, too. I don't roll out my dumplings. Some people do. I don't. I want to get it. I'm starting to get there. See how I can touch that and not somebody's at the door. And it doesn't stick. This is what we want. So give me just a moment, and we're going to start making our dumplings. Like, cooking our dumplings. If this camera falls over, I apologize so much. But so you see, we've got just the salt, broth, self-rising flour in here put together and now we are just going to take a little ball of dough like that and this is how I make my dumplings I don't roll them out I don't fold them nothing like that we are just going to make pretty thin and about about a finger long, about that thick, about a finger long. We're gonna turn our broth up and start laying dumplings in it. I'll do a couple more to show y'all. They don't have to be perfect. Mine sure ain't, but they will be good. This is gonna make a little bit of a denser dumpling you could alter this recipe with some different ingredients and uh, different proportions to make a 
fluffier dumpling. Bisquick makes really soft, fluffy dumplings. My family likes that too. When I make chicken and dumplings, I tend to use Bisquick to make dumplings for them. I, they like tend like theirs rolled out, but I prefer doing this way. But you see, there's a dumpling. So I'm gonna take this bowl of dough, fill this pot up, and we'll get back to you. All right, y'all. Y'all can see we're boiling readily, and that's what you need. As you can see, our dumplings are getting big. Puffing up, and you really want to want to boil them heavily. If you feel them starting to stick on the bottom, just stir them a little bit. Some people have things against stirring dumplings. My grandma does. I stir my dumplings, and they still come out good. You see, our broth is going to start thickening up because of the flour in these dumplings. It's going to kind of start seeping out and thicken this up. And we'll be back with some more seasoning. Oh, and um. All this little scum you see around the outside, like I've been, you can see where I've been scraping it off. Some meats, when you boil them, you get that. We just skim off the foam and scrape off the scum that gets on the side. Some people stir it in. I know that uh, the Ainu culture in Japan believes that to be the healthiest part of the meal, but we don't eat it. Um, but so we'll be back when it's time to put our meat in. All right, y'all. As you can see, this is like cooked down, got beautiful and thick. And so now, my little nephew helped me pick our squirrel meat. And it's kind of remarkable when you get to picking it how much you end up with off of, this is off of two squirrel. So we're going to mix that into our dumplings. Doesn't that look good? And at this point, now I had this squirrel stuck in the refrigerator so it could cool off for us to pick it. So we didn't have to wait as long. So we're just going to let this come back to temperature. But you see how thick that broth got? That's what you want. Just, I, I hear tell that um, when Cracker Barrel first started up as a restaurant, they couldn't quite figure out their dumplings. And the story goes that some old African-American woman who worked there... Um, spoke to the CEO who was at one of the restaurants. I might be mistelling this, misremembering this story, but uh, that he was making his dumplings wrong, and he asked her what to do, and she told him to boil the S word out of them. <laughs> but when you boil them down good, it does make this beautiful thick wrong. So we're going to put the lid on this and let that meat come up temperature, and we'll be ready to eat. All right, y'all, I lied. Excuse this, but I am going to get myself a bowl of dumplings because it just didn't feel right to do a cooking video without having the little taste test part for y'all. So, as you can see, they are just beautiful, thick dumplings, them little chunk of squirrel meat in it. So, let me... Burn my mouth real quick. Cut me off a dumpling. Just look at how pretty that is. Well, hold on. Mm. I did season a little bit more with just salt and pepper. I like really peppery dumplings. But this is just... Well, I'm going to have another bite because I just feel like eating in front of y'all. Mm. It's just an amazing way to eat um, small game meat. You know, a squirrel's an easy kind of animal to hunt. You can, you can tend to get a few of them most every time you go out. And this took two squirrels. And this is easily enough to feed three people. Four if you eat something else with it. So, I'm going to sit here and enjoy my dumplings, and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.